Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to look at Bitcoin news today. Congress reviews digital dollar bills. It's interesting that that right now there's two separate bills dealing with the digital dollar. I wonder what Congress is ultimately going to do. Is Bitcoin mainstream with governments? Lately, governments have been passing a lot of laws regarding Bitcoin and banking and all kinds of things. These are the exact kinds of regulations and frameworks that is necessary for Bitcoin to go mainstream. And was built Bitcoin built for a time like this with uh, all of the global crisis and panics and pandemics and uh, all the things that are happening to economies uh, and and uh, central banks fl- flushing money into economies all over the world was Bitcoin built for a time just like this? We're going to look into this and more as we dig into the Bitcoin news today. So Bitcoin trading for beginners, its idea is to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get 99 likes on this video? Smash that like button. It really helps us out. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So how a flurry of digital dollar proposals made it to Congress. Now, one thing we want to keep in mind is it doesn't make it to Congress unless there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that are paving the way for something like this to actually happen. And so, because there's a lot of great ideas that are floated around but never actually make it into Congress. So advocates for digitizing coronavirus relief payments began working with congressional staffers early this month to outline how Federal Reserve could potentially distribute funds to unbanked individuals quickly as the country's economic downturn worsens. A provision detailing the digital dollar in two different bills from the House of Representatives have been put on the desks of Congress. Now, the group has long advocated for a digital dollar, writing a paper back in 2018 on the subject and a Bloomberg opinion piece earlier this week. And so the people behind these bills have, it's not just something that happened yesterday, it's been something that has been in the works behind the scenes for several years. And it's finally actually coming to fruition. A digital wallet with the Fed would be a relative easy way of distributing funds. Still, while the bills painted the initiative as an urgent one targeted at providing immediate relief to U.S. residents, Rick said the process might take some time. And so it it could be fast-tracked in order to help people out immediately with the current crisis, or it's something that may end up taking a lot longer. And, and you know how government normally works. Things, things that normally should take a few hours, it takes days, weeks, months, even years. Because uh, government often moves very slow. The fact that it even got that far means there's already a lot of behind-the-scenes action happening that's already working on this, she said. At the height of this pandemic, we must do more to protect financial well-being of hardworking Americans and consumers, Brown said in a statement. They are on the front lines of this crisis and are already feeling the effects of the economic fallout. Now, the concerns are not unfounded. According to New York Times, the final relief bill, which both the House and Senate passed, allows the federal government to send payments only to eligible American taxpayers with direct deposit bank addresses on file with the Eternal Revenue Service. Eligible recipients who do not have an address on file or whose address is outdated may have to wait four or more months. Now, in my opinion, the people that don't have a bank account are the ones that need this money the worst um, because usually they have less money and that's why they don't have a bank account. Um, and so for them to have to wait for a month, more months is, is, 
I don't have the words to express it. It's a, it's a tragedy. It's a bad thing. Indeed, the bill itself stresses that funds will be dispersed electronically to any account which the payee authorized for tax refunds on or after January 1, 2018. And so hopefully they can work something out to, to be able to get this stimulus in the hands of the people who need it the most quickly and effectively. So we will see, time will tell. While coronavirus rages, Bitcoin has made a leap towards the mainstream. So having banned cryptocurrencies in the past or refused to acknowledge them as money, various countries have suddenly started recognizing them in their financial laws and courts. This could well mark an important shift for these digital assets towards the mainstream. The motivation for these shifts has been new global standards for anti-money laundering and counterterrorism set by Global Watchdog, the Financial Actions Task Force, FATF. The rules provide a useful know-your-customer anti-money laundering framework for cryptocurrency transactions that did not exist previously and were the reason why many countries did not allow cryptocurrencies to flourish. So on February 26, a French court ruled a loan involving Bitcoin was a consumer loan. This meant placing Bitcoin in the same bracket as money and other financial assets in France for the first time, reassuring users that they will enjoy the same protections under the law. Two days later, the financial services regulators in Abu Dhabi amended its virtual asset legislation to align with the FATF standards. Germany's financial regulators, Bafin, followed suit on March 2nd, shortly followed with South Korea lawmakers, having banned anonymous cryptocurrency transactions several years late, earlier. This is a complete change of direction from Seoul. Among other things, exchanges will have to open a real name bank account with an authorized Korean bank, which should reassure many investors that they can be used safely. India made a comparable U-turn on March 10th when its Supreme Court overturned the central bank's 2018 ban on banks transacting with cryptocurrency firms. This move had led to a drastic fall in the use of cryptocurrencies in the country. Finally, on March 16th, Zimbabwe announced it's developing a regulatory framework for cryptocurrencies that will establish a clear procedure for firms to become compliant with the country's financial regulations and therefore be allowed to do business with banks. This too reversed a 2018 ban. So it's interesting that all these bans uh, started in 2018 and that today they're getting reversed in a, a, by large numbers. And as you saw through that list that we read through, there have been country after country after country um, creating a financial framework, that uh, a legal framework that allows cryptocurrencies to work within their financial system. And so all of this is good news and all of this is leading towards the cryptocurrency and Bitcoin becoming mainstream. The status of the asset class within mainstream finance looks increasingly assured. The new rules clarify the status of cryptocurrency exchanges and other firms providing services in this space, making it much easier for them to transact with banks and, by extension, everyone else. With the growing market in crypto lending, these services look pivotally positioned to replace traditional banking services in the coming years. If more countries make similar moves to the ones I've highlighted above, Crypto assets could even become entrenched in the financial mainstream very soon. And so that is all good news towards the future and the longevity of Bitcoin and every other cryptocurrency out there. Now, Coinbase CEO says Bitcoin and cryptocurrency was built for moments like this. And when he says moments, he's really referring to crises. So during the session, CEO Brian Armstrong said Bitcoin is made for this type of crisis the world is currently facing. Satoshi Nakamoto's main motive for creating Bitcoin 
some speculate, was to establish a new financial system with greater resiliency. And it really isn't a speculation. Uh, he has stated that. That was stated in, multi, in the white papers that was used to create Bitcoin, that Bitcoin was uh, formed from, as well as a lot of other documents during the creation of Bitcoin that were written during the creation of Bitcoin. Um, and those definitely clearly stated that they saw the banking crisis of 2008 and wanted to create a currency that would be a solid, reliable standard uh, a currency that wouldn't be uh, manipulated the way that economies and banks have manipulated the financial system for years. So the good news is that Bitcoin was built for this. Bitcoin is amazing. It's global. It's inflation proof. It's digital. It's the money that people need right now in this moment. And that's a quote from the, the uh, Coinbase CEO, Brian Armstrong. So a few more quotes from the same person. Just about every sector of the economy is really struggling. Manufacturing people don't want to go to factories if they can't social distance. Retail has been decimated. Travel is really struggling. We might even see some of these investment banks needing uh, to be bailed out again, just like things were bailed out back in 2008. So in some ways, it's incredibly lucky that we as a tech company are able to continue to work at all because almost every other sector of the economy has been really struggling. So what does this actually mean in practice? Well, when you put a bunch more money into the ecosystem and the number of goods is not really going up due to manufacturing slowdowns, that means over time there's going to be higher prices. There's basically going to be inflation. And when that happens, people try to look for alternative investments that are inflation proof, that basically have guaranteed scarcity baked into them. So that is a great case for Bitcoin and also other digital assets, real estate and things like that, that are hedges against inflation. Crypto is going through all these growing pains. It needs to become more scalable. It needs to become more usable for average people. And that's how we're going to get it to be 100 million and a billion people. And that's the infrastructure that Coinbase is really providing. So Coinbase, because of the infrastructure that they've built, does make cryptocurrency more scalable um, because there, as a Coinbase customer, when you transact within the Coinbase platform, things happen very, very quickly. It's not until you get outside of the Coinbase platform, i.e. maybe you're withdrawing your cryptocurrency off of Coinbase into a private wallet or into a self-custody hardware wallet, um, the, the, the transactions are almost immediately because they actually don't, while the transactions are on the Coinbase platform, they don't actually hit the Bitcoin network. They don't hit the Bitcoin network until you withdraw those cryptocurrencies into an external wallet or into a uh, self-custody hardware wallet. And once you do that, then it hits the Bitcoin network. And that's where you, you experience the slowness of the Bitcoin network. Um, but in the meantime, it's not slow because it's all running within the Coinbase uh, platform. So economic freedom means sound money for everybody. It means property rights. It means free trade. It means you can go to work at the company you want to work at. Start the company you want to start. We're going to use cryptocurrency at this unique moment in history to build a more open financial system that creates economic freedom for people all over the world. And so that creating economic freedom for people all over the world is a big part of the, the use or the intent for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. That and the other thing was to protect it from people that are doing fraudulent things like many of the banks have done over the last few decades. You know, that's why we had the 2008 financial crisis, because banks were giving loans 
for people to buy houses and properties that had no business buying those houses or properties. Many of them had no means for paying those loans back. And yet the banks still gave them the loans. And then when the loans were defaulted on, the banks got these huge bailouts from the government, which just was not right. So anyway, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have anything you want to discuss? Is there something that I didn't cover that you want to cover in more detail? Or do you just flat out disagree with what I said? Please leave your polite comments, your polite disagreements in the comment section on the YouTube channel. I would love to hear from you because you know things I don't know. I know things that you don't know. And when we share our knowledge with each other, we'll grow smarter together. I'd like to grow smarter together with you. So feel free to share your comments and information in the channel below. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl, and have a fantastic day.